Welcome back to the channel. This is the third video in a series of videos from installing wainscot start to finish. In the first video, we snapped these lines, determined the height, talked about a little bit of theory on design. The second video, we looked at our reveals to set the proper reveals in the corners, inside corners, termination corners against casings, and outside corners. So if you missed those first two videos and somehow stumbled into this one, I highly recommend you go back and watch those because some of this might not make sense to you. Now in this video, we're gonna be getting into figuring panel dimensions. This is the most requested thing in this series so far and I'm gonna break it down for you right now. All right, so what I've done here to better help you visualize this is I've cut some one by four pieces of MDF. These are just scraps that I had laying around. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out so you can understand what's going on here. Now, if you watch the last video, the previous one before this, I talked about these end pieces being definite. So what I'm gonna do, I wouldn't do this on an install, but this is just for the sake of the video. I'm just gonna tack one in right here. Same thing in this corner. Just gonna tack one in here. And these are oversized. So we're gonna tack that in right there. Now, when it comes to everything in the middle here, this is all variable. How many styles are we gonna put here? So are we gonna put just one in the middle? That's an option, we could do that. Are we gonna put one here? And then one here, split it up into three panels? That's an option, we could do that. Or are we gonna do four panels by adding three boards? This is totally up to us from a design standpoint. Now what you're gonna hear people say is that you wanna have an odd number of panels, which between style and style is referred to as the panel. So you'd have one, two, three, four panels. You will hear, hear people say, you always want an odd number of panels. We, own, we have an even number of panels right here, obviously four. I don't buy into that. I don't think you should always have odd or you should always have even. I think the wall tells you what it wants based off the rest of the room. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. When I start this process of determining panel dimensions, I go to the smallest wall that I can find in the room or area that I'm working in. So this wall right here is not the smallest wall. This wall right here is obviously not the smallest wall. If you look that way, we've got this wacky situation with under this window, the small space right here, and then a large section here. If we keep going this way, we've got this large wall. Okay, what I would consider the smallest wall is right here. If you wanna come around and look at this. This would be the smallest wall, and this is what I would use to determine the rest of the room. This wall right here, if you remember, I, I showed you how to mark these reveals and everything for the layout. This wall right here would come out to, well, I'm kind of confused, hold on a second. All right, let me check something real quick because in the last video, I made two marks right here because I was showing how you could you could make a mistake. All right, so it's gonna be this line right here. That's our good one. And let me check something here. 28 and three quarters, okay? So I got 28 and three quarters for this panel. Now I have an option here too. I could split this up into two if I wanted to, but me personally, I don't like to have the panels that small. So that would, that's just personal preference. Again, I don't wanna have just narrow panels like that. If that's what you want, by all means, throw another one in right here. This is where it all, it all kind of boils down to the installer or the designer. So I know for sure that this being my smallest wall and it's, it's 28 and three quarter inch panel from style to style, the rest of the room will now be modified 
to fit somewhere in and around this number. So I don't want to have a 28 and 3 quarter inch panel here and then a 14 inch panel here. The smallest wall is just a determining factor for how I lay these out like I talked about earlier. Do I put one, two, three and put them like that? This obviously I'm just putting this rough so you can get the idea of what I'm saying. I don't know yet. I just want to hover around that 28 and three quarters from that wall is basically what I'm saying. So this cannot be 28 and three quarters it, unless it's just some you know, amazing coincidence, which usually never happens. It's not like you can make the panels the same everywhere. So just get over that of trying to make them all the same. They're not going to be the same. The biggest takeaway from this is the wall tells you what it needs to be based off the smallest wall. One other thing I'll talk about real quick is that let's say you did want to split this up right here into two. Okay, so let's say you do like these kind of more, you know, narrow um, vertical panels like this. I actually don't think that looks bad, but I'm, for this room, I don't want to do that. I just want to go with the more boxy panel. So let's say you did this. I'm just going to roughly put it right there. So that means from style to style, our panel would be about 12 and 5 eighths. So now instead of this 28 and 3 quarters, then we would bring more of these into the picture and try to make them be 12 and 5 eighths, right? So we're going to need to add more vertical um, styles in the picture here. This one's too short, but it'll give you the point. This can all change, but that shortest wall tells you what to make this. That shortest wall tells you what to make that. That shortest wall tells you what to make the whole room. Start with the shortest wall because you can't change that. It's more solid, it's more concrete, it's less variable. This is more variable. You can take away one or you can add one. You can take away two or you can add two. So hopefully that's making sense now. Now let's talk about this kind of wacky section over here. And if you've been following this series, you know I've got some wacky work around for the door right here, if you look right here, remember I made this little marking tool to mark and figure out my panel dimensions here. And I made that same thing over here. Now here, with this piece here, this is gonna be the shortest panel in the room, but I'm not gonna let this short panel of eight inches determine the rest of the room. I would just call that an odd one out because I don't want that narrow of a panel. But since this space tells me that this has to be that dimension, personally, I don't want to base the whole rest of my build on this. Again, that's me making that call. Could you say, well, this is telling me eight inches. Well then, me as the installer, everything else needs to hover around eight inches, which means I'm gonna to need to bring a bunch of these in here. Yeah, you could do that. You definitely could. And somebody might make that design call. But to me, odd one out. Just leave it at that. Let's talk about going down this window here. Let me move my scraps here out of the way. Now, if that's 28 and three quarters, let's measure about how big these windows are. So these are about from like window, middle of this window to the corner is 35 inches. And then we'll have a vertical style right here in the middle, a small one. So I would just say, hey, let's have one panel under each of these windows. I'll be around 30 inches. That's hovering around that 28 and three quarters from over there. Done, I'll have a panel here, a panel there. Now I've treated this as one section. I've treated this as one section. And then if you remember, like I mentioned from the previous video, now I can treat, move this stuff out of the way. Now I can treat from this reveal line to this reveal line as another section. So let's go ahead and figure out the panel dimensions 
for this wall we've been working on based off our smallest panel over there of 28 and 3 quarters. And as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and write 28 and 3 quarters so we know what we're going for here. So to figure out this, we're going to stretch our tape out from that style over to this one. And we're going to see that we're at 80 and a half. And we'll check the bottom too. 80 and a half. So if we're at 80 and a half, and I'll go ahead and use this as a chalkboard to help you see it better. So we'll go 80 and one half. Just like that. To split this up and get it to about 28 and three quarters, I think I'm going to need two vertical styles in there. And I'm dashing these because they're variable. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to find the width of our vertical styles. That's going to be three and a half. That's going to be three and a half. Now what we're going to do, we're going to add those two three and a halves together. It's going to give us seven. So this space right here needs to be eliminated from our panel dimensions because it's taking away from the inside panel from style to style. So we need to eliminate that seven inches. So what we'll do, we'll do 80 and a half minus seven. And that would be equals 73 and a half. But we need to take 73 and a half now and divide it into three. That'll bring us to 24.5. So why did we divide by three? Because we have one, two, three panels. Each one of these panels is going to be 24 and a half inches. Right here, 24 and a half and 28 and three quarters, I think we're justified in putting two vertical styles here to split this up into three panels. Your eye will not pick up that difference from here to there, and your eye doesn't even want to pick up that difference. Your eye just kind of looks at it as a whole and says, yeah, that, that actually looks right. If it was way off, your eye would think something was wrong. The human eye is, needs to be tricked, and this is a perfect example of it. These will never be the same size as the, every wall, unless you just have a square room with no doors or anything. So just accept that fact. All right, so hopefully my sketch made sense for you, but all that all it means now is that we're gonna take a panel, I mean a style right here, put it at 24 and a half, put one here, 24 and a half, we'll have 24 and a half here, and then that's how this breaks down, okay? 24 and a half, subtracted this three and a half, and this three and a half, from our total distance here, of 80 and a half, and that's how we got that. Let's, so with this, this right here, this what I've just shown you, applies to every Wayne Scott job, period. One nineteen and a quarter, and then I'll go to the bottom here. And we'll do 119 and a quarter. One, two, three vertical styles, it's looking like to me. Looks like we might have an obstacle right here with this outlet. And if we do, I'll show you how we can work around that. But that looks about right. You know, these obviously aren't spaced equal, but it looks like I'd be hovering around 20, mid 20s. So now we've got three vertical styles that are variable. So I'll go ahead and dash these lines again. So right here, if, if this works out, we're going to have four panels on this wall. If you have three vertical styles, you have four panels. Like over there, we have two vertical styles, we have three panels. However many styles you have, you always have one more panel than number of styles. But the reason I bring that up 
is because I have four. Again, I don't see a reason to have an odd number or an even number. Let's just keep them as close as that 28 and three quarters as we can. My theory, my personal preference. So let's do this. We've got three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. So we'll take three and a half, add all those up together. That'll give us 10 and a half. So we'll take this 119 and a quarter and minus 10 and a half and see what that gives us. 108 and three quarters. And then we'll divide that by four because again, one, two, three, four panels. 27.1875. 27.1875. So with that, are we hovering around our 28 and three quarters? You better believe it right there. 28 and three quarters, 27.1875. And then we've got 24 and a half there. So we're hovering around this mid to high 20s kind of area. Okay, so this looks good to me. I've got these four panels here, those three panels here, and this one here. The last two walls are really this large one and this kind of smaller one that I've already roughly figured out. And I'll spare you the time of showing you this because it's the exact same thing we did over here. Same exact process. Now, a couple things. If I was working in someone's house that was not my own, there's no way I would ever draw on the wall like this. So don't, don't draw on the wall. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty big and in your face kind of thing. I would do this either on a piece of scrap or just on my phone and just figure it out. Another thing, I would have the floors protected in someone's house if I was doing this for a client before I ever even brought the first tool in, we roll out paper and protect the floor. So just try to focus on the actual content of the video and Let's not worry about the floor. The floor looks cool, makes for a good video. This is video number three in a series. So I'll put the playlist link below so you can go on to the next video when it posts. And I'll talk about material choices and what I choose and a little bit about the design. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all on the next one. Take care.